What's up guys, I'm Chris, a gearhead here at Competitive Cyclist. I'm Brad. And we're here to chat about the two new bikes that are just launched, the 5010 and the Furtado from Santa Cruz and Juliana. Yeah. What's the big news? They've gone mixed wheel size. Pretty sick. I just got back from riding it and uh, first impressions were awesome. It's, it's definitely like a super versatile trail bike, something that you can kind of ride on, you know, nothing too big. It's only got 130 mil of travel still in the rear and 140 up front, so it can definitely meet its maker. Um, but I think it's still super capable and a little bit more stable and capable now with that bigger wheel up front. We were running it in the low mode and the thinking corner. Nice. Yeah. So let's run through some of the design details. What are some key changes to this year's 5010 and Furtado? So they've added the glove box to yep. fit your tube, your essentials. But my question is, can you fit a burrito? Let's see. Sure can. Yes. Yeah, man, I think the glove box is uh, an added element that I personally appreciate. As we talked about before, I hate wearing hip packs for small after work rides for Honestly, anything leaving just tools and all sorts of things in there is pretty key. Yep. So same. Super pumped on that. So they've adjusted the chainstay lengths. They're now size specific. It's also slightly longer, but kept the bottom bracket height, so you can still corner like you used to, which yep. is sweet. They obviously adjusted the seat tube angle to match being a mixed wheel size. Yeah. They made it a little bit more modern, but they kept its playful characteristics that I think everybody loved about the 5010. There's a lot of people riding this bike as a dual slalom bike. There's people that are using this bike as like kind of a slope bike in a way. Mm -hmm. Our local jumps in Salt Lake, I Street, there's a lot of people on 5010s there. And also they've added that uh, sag window so you can actually kind of set up your sag a little bit easier and have that window to see through um, at your sag numbers on the shock, which is super nice. Yeah. They've also added a little design detail in that shock tunnel too, which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. So They've reduced the anti-squat in this generation versus last year's, providing a little bit better traction and reduced effects of, of pedal kickback. How does that affect the, the pedaling efficiency of the bike going uphill? It pedaled super well. Um, I think, as you'd expect, 130 mil rear end to pedal. Like, it, it can climb super well. I also noticed that cornering, and in fast chunder sections, it tracked super well, it went where I needed it to go. Even with that less travel than coming off of riding the Nomad for a couple of weeks, I think this bike feels kind of like a baby Nomad where there's a lot of traction, but you can be a little bit more nimble with it. And I was appreciative of that. Okay, now that we got the technical details out of the way, what are your riding impressions? I'm just continuously impressed by the pedaling capabilities of these mixed wheel bikes that Santa Cruz keeps coming up with. So it's, it's a little bit more capable on the up and the down. Um, and I felt more at home in it on the down, for sure. Um, but it still jumps well. It's kind of like the BMX bike of full suspension bikes in my eyes. Where do you think this bike fits into Santa Cruz's lineup and who do you think it's for? I think this bike is for the rider who wants to make their local trails as fun as possible. Whether you know it's jimming off the side or just exploring different features on of different lines 
on on their trails and exploring the capabilities of their bike um, without losing the characteristics of the old 5010. So it's a little more capable than the Tallboy, a little bit more playful maybe than a high tower. Yeah. Cool. I would agree with that. Definitely. Yeah. Um, with the back end, having the, the 27.5, you can throw this bike around a little easier than both of those bikes and still enjoy the, the rollover of a 29er mm -hmm. on the front. So you have that, that capability. Yeah, there was specifically today on a trail that we rode, it had a big kind of log rollover drop-ish, pedal drop kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you could just kind of not think about it twice. You just roll into it like you normally would with a big wheeled bike and you just kind of mobbed over it. And I was able to land and corner super well, keep my speed and go towards this jump that we were sessioning that was super fun on this bike. And uh, I think that proves the characteristics of this bike. You can take it to the next level with that bigger front wheel. Uh, but it's still super playful and manageable, like the Historic 5010. It's a great bike for a new rider. It's a great bike for a seasoned rider that doesn't need a huge travel bike or an enduro bike on their local trails. Um, or say you have a DH rig, this could be an awesome second bike for you. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about build kits or geo specs on the 5010, reach out to a gearhead today. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Great bike, rides nice. We really liked it. Come back for more.